Bel Air's $500 million mega mansion, The One. Do you know that according to recent estimates, only a handful of homes around the world are worth $300 million? Then there are some houses that are even worth more than $300 million. Most of the most expensive houses are in America, and today we will tell you about the house at the top of the scale. Before we start that, go destroy that like button and subscribe to our channel. Without any further delay, let us start. Jeff Bezos might have moved too early to make his massive property splurge, with America's richest house set to hit the market very soon. Amazon founder Bezos threw down a record $245 million for a Beverly Hills mansion, the most ever paid for a home in Los Angeles. But that record itself could soon be broken, when a 100,000 square meter Bel Air mega mansion named The One is put up for sale shortly. The most gigantic mansion in the Los Angeles area is finally ready for its official public debut after more than eight years of planning and building. The tiny shopping mall-sized house, known only as The One, straddles one of Bel Air's tallest promontories, spanning nearly 100,000 square feet of total living space. By comparison, the White House is little under 55,000 square feet, while the 115-room Hearst Castle is only 68,500 square feet. Even though it is clearly gigantic, it is difficult to appreciate the overwhelming enormity of the one by simply looking at the photographs or numbers. Take a walk to get a sense of the project's scope. The estate, which looms over Strada Della Road in Bel Air like a gigantic white alien spacecraft, stretches for a quarter mile. The main driveway, which is located on a secluded cul-de-sac called Errol Way, is long and broad enough to put most public roads to shame. Nile Niami, possibly LA's most famous and famously bombastic developer of ultra-high-end homes, the stylish contemporary variety seen in magazines and bought by billionaires, is the personal chef dœuvre of the palatially palatial extravaganza. The San Fernando Valley native rose to popularity about a decade ago by building Hollywood Hills mansions in the $20 million range. Since then, he's moved on to bigger and bolder projects, selling them to celebrities like Diddy, Floyd Mayweather, Calvin Klein, and the Winklevoss twins. All of this culminated in Niami purchasing the eight-acre promontory from Rita Kogan, the late video game heiress and daughter of Space Invaders creator Michael Kogan, for $28 million in late 2012. He swiftly demolished the original estate, which is a big mid-century modern home in disrepair, and has since spent tens of millions of dollars bringing his spec house to life. Niami says that the stress of his growth odyssey has prematurely aged him. It can be risky to construct mega mansions without a buyer in mind. Cost overruns and delays are prevalent, carrying costs are considerable, and altering luxury preferences are difficult to foresee. While a building as eye-catching as the one attracts attention, the facilities and unique design can eventually reduce the pool of potential buyers, according to appraiser Jonathan Miller of Miller Samuel Inc., a real estate valuation and consulting firm. According to the developer, Los Angeles has endeavored to prevent the development of new mega mansions, which means that nothing like the one can be erected again. He claims the unique features have piqued potential purchasers' attention. He is talking to them right now, but he will not say anything because of privacy concerns. The one will be revealed after the final interior designing is completed, according to Niami. Niami gave GQ his first public interview on the property in 2015, disclosing that once completed, he expected to charge $500 million for the Paul McLean designed estate. The 52-year-old developer stated that the house will include a room dedicated just to live jellyfish aquariums, a space for preserving fresh flowers, a perma-frozen room with a nice bar, and a confectionery room. There would, of course, be an in-house nightclub. Some of those expectations have been scaled back. The jellyfish room was eventually cancelled due to its high cost and impracticality. The same may be said regarding the fresh flowers, ice bar, and planned catering kitchen. The nightclub and the candy wall room, as well as a 50-car garage, a four-lane bowling alley, and an Olympic-sized indoor swimming pool with lounge decks remain. There are also five outdoor swimming pools, all of which have an infinity edge. The interiors of the mansion were designed by Catherine Rotondi of KFR design, as were all of Niami's previous projects. The asking price has been slashed in line with the inside renovations. Although the precise figure hasn't been revealed, and the agents involved have remained tight-lipped, 
Reports claim the revised request is now only roughly $340 million, a recognition to budget cuts and realities. That more realistic figure is a relief for Miami, who has been dealing with recent financial difficulties, including foreclosure procedures on other projects, according to prior reports. Still, the rumored price is more than double the most expensive home sale in California history, which was $165 million paid by Jeff Bezos for David Geffen's eight-acre Beverly Hills estate last April. It's also $100 million more than Ken Griffin paid for his New York penthouse in 2019 for $238 million, the country's most expensive home purchase of all time. Buyers will get a glass-walled contemporary showcase with a home theater, a beauty salon, and an Olympic-sized indoor swimming pool with lounging decks in exchange. The master suite, at 6,000 square feet, is larger than many suburban McMansions, with its own private swimming pool and at least two bedroom-sized dressing rooms, both of which are luxurious enough to rival any Rodeo Drive store. A 50-car garage, a four-lane bowling alley, and a sky deck with a putting green are also available. The architectural virtues of the one continue to split opinion. Some people believe that futuristic designs will last a long time. Others say it resembles a bloated asylum or hospital, or for that matter, a rigorously geometric residential white elephant. According to the Los Angeles Times, Casa Encantada, which translates to charmed house in Spanish, has not just once but twice set the record for the country's highest residential real estate sale. First in 1979, when David Murdoch purchased the property for $12.4 million. Then again in 2000, when the current owner Winnick paid $94 million. If the property achieves the lofty listing price, it will trump the $119.75 million that the former Spelling Manor collected earlier this year and, for the third time, be the priciest home in the States. Charmed indeed. Miami said in 2015 that the property was being built with a very specific buyer in mind, but it is unclear who that buyer is. Who would want to buy a mega prominent residential complex of this scale and complexity is still a mystery. Even at $340 million, it is still out of reach for many billionaires. According to previous reports, Miami intends to focus on new money tech tycoons such as Jan Coombe who sold WhatsApp to Facebook and has since spent more than $300 million on luxury California real estate, and Honey founder George Ruan, who sold his company to PayPal for $4 billion and built an $80 million Bel Air compound. The traditional suspects include Saudi and Emirati sheiks, as well as enormous crazy rich money from Hong Kong, Taiwan, and mainland China. If any of them are looking for the biggest and baddest complex in all of Hollywood, there is truly only one option. That is all for today, folks. Visit our comments section and tell us about your dream luxury home. See you soon with another amazing video.